Hello everybody, John again, and yet again an impromptu live video. Um, last time we did a little live video here from the garage, we um, we had a reasonable success, people seemed to like it, but there was lots of buffering. And I put that down to the Wi-Fi signal coming from my house down to the garage, onto my laptop, and basically not just quite being strong enough. Um, actually thinking I might have been wrong, because I'm actually filming this with my phone, which is then linked up to everything else that's going on. And I think it may actually have been the phone signal was just on the fringes of uh, what was good. And as I live in rural Lincolnshire, uh, it's never the very best anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. But I did think, ooh, I've got a big metal door on the carriage and I'm in a brick building. I wonder if I just open the door and uh, try things out. So this video is coming to you courtesy of that. Let's just see what's going on. If anybody is able to see me, if they want to just give us a comment in the live chat, that'd be great. And then I will know what's happening. It says live in two minutes, which is not true. Let me just see if my video will refresh. And then we'll get on. Do, 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 do. Very much the experimental stage still, these live chats, as you can see. Hi Tony, I just seen your, your yes, hi there. People are popping up on my screen, so that's good. Um, yes, I think we've actually got a proper live feed going. Let me just check that out. Yeah, it is hard to tell what's live and what's delayed with this system, but hey, I'll get there in the end. So, um, people who I know are out there, Tony Fisher, hi mate, uh, Joe Renton, hi yeah, and David Ball, thanks very much for joining us, even though there was no notice, <laughs> there probably never will be the way I work on these sorts of things. Um, so, what did I want to chat about? Um, if anybody wants to chat with me, then use the chat area to the right of your screen, if you're on a PC or... I think that it's below your screen if you're on a mobile phone. Well, you can put something in the comments, but I'll have to flick backwards and forwards and I might catch up on some of the comments below the uh, video itself, if you like. But uh, yeah, what's, what's going on? So I'm not running a marathon today then. No, Tony, I decided it was too wet. Otherwise, obviously, I'd be out there running the, uh, the London Marathon. Um, so what's going on? First thing is, I had been thinking quite recently, when I'm watching other people's YouTube channels, I was thinking, oh, um, it's Sunday, such and such a video coming out, I, I was looking forward to it. And um, thinking, oh, maybe I should do more of that. Maybe it should be something where you know there's something coming a particular day. Um, and then Reality Bites. I've I'd actually built myself up a little stock of videos to be able to put out when I was busy. Those have now gone. I'm very busy with work, so that slows me up in terms of putting out videos. I, f I feel like I'd like to do something regularly and maybe a little live session like this on a Sunday wherever possible might be the way to go um, to keep things ticking over and being able to maintain a conversation with you guys is great. But yeah, regular videos, less so. So I've been thinking about that. And why I'm in the garage today, if I just whirl around, um, you'll see using my brilliant tripod, which is today consisting of a chair and a bicycle rack. Um, I've got my camera set up and I'm ready to do an actual video recording, which you'll see in a couple of days, probably. I've swirl that around. And that is probably two parts, two separate videos. One is, I was having a little trouble a while back with the washer bottle, uh, well, washer pump for the screen wash. 
and I did a lot of work through the wheel arch, through the access hatch, cleaning up contacts, etc. And things seem to work again. Um, but I've been having more intermittent issues with no washer jet, no fluid being squirted onto the screen. And as when you press the button on the end of the right hand stalk, it does a few wipes and washes a screen. It still wipes, so I know the switch is working. So it's got to be that electrical connection I've been cleaning or the pump itself. And I suspect it's probably the pump itself, 25 years old. So I am going to take the pump off and give it a bash, um, see if I can see anything obvious, potentially order up another one. I haven't decided whether to get a new one or a second hand one yet, we'll see. But that's on the cards for today, immediately I'll finish chatting with you guys. Um, also, probably film stage one or video one of servicing my gearbox. Now. I'm going to break it into chunks anyway because I am familiar with the fact that my videos do tend to run on because I don't plan them. There's not a scripted word in anything, as you can tell. Um, I do edit them quite heavily because I quite enjoy editing, um, but they do run on quite a bit. So what I thought I'd do is today I'm going to get the car up in the air and do the pre-service in the gearbox stuff. So that is, you really shouldn't let the oil out of your sump of your engine or the sump on your gearbox or the sump of your axle unless you are able to prove to yourself you can undo the filler. Because if the filler won't open and you've let the oil out, your car is tied up wherever it is. You can't start it, can't drive it. So very important, check that you can open up the filler hole in your gearbox before you do anything else. Next is the bolts that hold the sump pan on on the uh, gearbox of the XK8, X100s are prone to snapping. That's because they're not a thick item. Uh, they're running to an aluminium housing. They can corrode in. Fortunately, they are through holes. So the, the thread comes through back so I want to get in there, I'm going to do some uh, pre-lubing, penetrating oil around all of the bolts. Check it out, make sure none of them are rounded off because people have already been in there trying to take the sump off. Um, and also probably give them all a bit of an impact. And I'll probably just put the Torx bit, should be a 27, unless the bolt's been upgraded. 27 Torx into the bolts, put an extension piece on and I'll just whack them with a hammer just to give them all a little bit of a shock and then that will probably be it for today. That way I'll know that when I come to it I've got the very best chance of doing the job. I might even try easing a couple of them off but I've got all the kit to do the servicing. Next chance I get I'll do the dropping down of the oil, changing the filters etc and then I'll probably do a separate one on how to fill it up, uh, run through the priming of the system, get everything primed and pumped, testing it out, etc., etc. So that's sort of the missions I got on today. In the title, I also alluded to Starlings, but I'll come back to that in just one moment. So I'm just going to take a second to see if anybody is watching. And yes, there are people watching, which is great news. Um, if you wonder why I'm looking away from you, this is the little setup I've got at the moment so I've got my computer running a rather delayed version of exactly what's happening over here um, but I can see the comments and the uh, chat so we got David Bolt hi John hi David Tony Fisher yeah I'm definitely not running the marathon uh, playing it by ear absolutely Marius Varan hi John hi Marius Alan Ross hi Alan uh, in two pack we trust. I hope you become the first man to get pregnant. I really do. I hope you change the world before your time. Hello? Uh, Graham Walker, hi all. That proves I don't script anything, doesn't it? Um, so, there we go. Let's just tilt you back. I'm going to just look to check. There's nothing in the comments area. All good. 
So yes, yeah, starlings, what the hell? So I came in yesterday to the garage, nothing to do with the car. Um, I've been busy trying to do lawns and things. So managed to, on the highest setting, mow my lawns. Um, still got to tidy up after it. But in doing so, popped in the garage to get a few things. And I haven't been in for a week because I've been away. And as I walked down here, I thought, ooh, you just flip your screen around. I'm going to trip over if I don't. There we go. Um, I thought, ooh, this is different. I don't remember that piece of plastic being on the floor. I normally store that up there. And I see these little white stains on the floor. Oh, what have I spilt? There's a few more over here. Yeah, I don't remember that being knocked over. Um, yeah. And I'm sure the last time I put my car away, I would have wiped that off. And it dawned on me. There's been a bird in my garage. And that's happened a few times in the past. Um, we get uh, Swifts and Martins and all sorts of things around here. But not since I've had a new garage door. And the new garage door is properly boxed in at the top for no drafts. Some of you remember I did a little video on how to fit a like a carpet curtain over a roller blind door to stop drafts. Well, I don't need one now because I've got a new garage door. So I think, well, I haven't got any windows of that open. How the hell are they going? And it, again, slow dawning on me occurred, but yeah. They've got in because the door's been open. They've not got out. Hence, this is um, from a panicked birdie and more investigation. I do store the car in here with the top off quite often. Uh, look. A little bit of uh, soilage on my car. So, I've even got a little something on that blind there. So, um, yes, I've got some tidying up to do. And to cut to the chase, I unfortunately found a starling and he was in the bucket that I have below my sink. So it obviously flapped around and uh, got himself scared and in a fluster. And either bashed into something and fell or thought he could jump in the bucket and see what was in there but half full of water and so unfortunately he's now an ex-starling so yeah be careful you don't lock things in your garage um i've got lots of roof space i don't know if you can see beyond the lighting in here lots of roof space in this garage so it's very easy for things to fly in and not be noticed um I'm always very careful when I close my shed to make sure there's no cats or anybody else wandered in. Because when I lock it, they might not uh, see the light of day again for another week. But yeah, a little sad moment. Okie dokie, so let's see who else is chatting with us down here. Hopefully this is not buffering in the same disastrous way that it did before. And another good sign is I can tell that the the other me on the laptop is catching up with me. So if I now go for your experimental purposes, hello, and we just give it a moment, we'll find there we are. So I'm not actually far behind now, whereas it was a good 30 seconds when I started. So I think it's actually sorting itself. It may just be a phone signal issue that I need to think of better ways of doing. Okay, so. Da -da 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 -da. Um, hi, John. Looking forward to the how to gearbox tutorial videos. Great as usual. Thank you very much, Clive. Yeah, me too. I've had this stuff to service this for. It's got to be six months. Just haven't got round to it. I've um, really been looking forward to it. I I don't know whether the gearbox has ever been serviced in my car. It's not massive mileage. 
it's uh, 52,000 miles, I think, I'm on at the moment. Um, so it shouldn't need an oil change or filter change based on mileage. Um, it certainly needs one based on being 26 years old. But of course, the most fascinating thing is that Jaguar claims that these are sealed for life gearboxes. I don't know if that's a Jaguar claim or it's a ZF claim. There'll be somebody out there who works for ZF. Can you let us know? Do you do you claim them to be sealed for life and do you mean it? Um, and all that sealed for life really means on these is there is no dipstick. So you can't check the levels and there's no easy access filler. It's just very awkward. Um, and they do seem to last very well. But oil is oil and it degrades and it's a gearbox. It's got moving parts. It's got clutches in there. They're, they're friction materials. They're, it's going to fill that oil with rubbish. So eventually the oil is going to be in very poor condition. There's going to be too much debris. It's going to block small channels. So they do need servicing. But in fairness, maybe they are 100,000 mile and service gearboxes. And that's why it's okay to have poor access to do that. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it myself, seeing what sorts of things fall out the bottom. Um, da -da 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 -da. Commiserations to Paul, I feel for you. Uh, sorry, oh, missed, missed that one out. Paul, Paul Mizzen. Hi John, sadly I wrote my XKR off two weeks ago. I'm devastated. Feel for you, buddy. We know they're not just cars. If it was just a car, you'd have a Toyota Corolla. So um, very sorry to hear that, Paul. Um, hopefully nobody was hurt. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's just a toy. It's just metal. So um, yeah, worse things happen, but I, I do feel for you. Do you think you'll be getting another one, Paul? Um, it's kind of an interesting question because I know how addictive and how lovely these cars are but if you've owned one you also know that you do have to tinker with them and you do have to spend money on them and you'll be very aware of that so will you go again very interested to hear from you if you're up to telling us um Paul Miz and Tony yeah oh there you are. answers coming in as we hear um, thanks, Tony. I'm undecided what to do, but I reckon it'll be another Jag, but maybe something more practical, regrettably. Well, whatever you get, I hope you have real good fun with it. I constantly am looking at other Jags. Um, I have the space to get into real trouble. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't have the money or the time to get into too much trouble. But I, I must admit, in terms of practical Jags, the XF Sport Brake is right at the top of my list. That will happen at some point. I've had XFs previously. The 3 litre D engine, I think, is an absolute miracle. It's so torquey, it's so smooth, it's characterful, it's quick, it's economical. I know it's a diesel and therefore doesn't sound right, but brilliant is brilliant. So yeah, a three litre S maybe sport brake would be a, probably the top of my practical Jags list. Um, Mike Reno, hi Mike. Um, seal for life if you don't live long. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marius Varan. Yes, I agree. Sealed for death, some of these items. Uh, the other one on Jags is how they do the back axle, the diff. Um, some of you will have seen my videos on getting good access and being able to change a diff oil in an XKA. It's not easy. There's ways of doing it, but it's really not easy and you just feel like they've sealed it for death to make sure they do some silly things now and again. Uh, Joe Renton, I'm going to need a heat resistant clove, I think you meant glove, for checking the oil level um, with the exhaust hot. Yes, 
yeah, very good tip. Fortunately, because I've got a little uh, forge, uh, well, it's forge, it's a furnace, um, for melting aluminium and casting odd bits and pieces. I've got some really big gauntlets, and I should be using those when I'm doing the gearbox service, because yeah, it's so, so easy to burn yourself when you're doing the filling procedure, which involves having the car running and at reasonable temperature, hence the exhaust pipe's gonna be hot, and you're going to slip your hand between the transmission tunnel and the exhaust pipe and work around with some tools. So good gloves, not rubber. Very, very important. Yeah, cool. Um, Paul Mizzen again. Uh, yeah, I walked away with injury. Oh, sorry. I should read ahead. Sorry, Paul. I walked away injury free, thankfully, and strangely the airbags didn't go off when I hit the central reservation after hitting a large pool of water and aquaplane spun me three times. Scary, scary, scary. I've, I've experienced a really big aquaplaning in uh, one of my Jags. Wasn't this one. That one was, that was an XF actually. And um, yeah, good tires on it, ABS, all the rest of it, but Essentially, the whole car slew to about 30 degrees to the direction of travel, again on a motorway, and then fortunately for me, it snapped back quite straight with no incident. Middle of the night, middle lane as well. Very, very scary stuff. Uh, Jeff Blanchard, Ozarks reporting in. Hi, John. Still jealous where you live, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Mike Reno, silly. Going back to your UK versus US terminology video, on the driver notification area, under the odo, odometer, in the US, if the truck, trunk, I think, or boot is open, it reads trunk open. Aha! Do UK car reads boot open? Yes. <laughs> we would just ignore it if it said trunk open. <laughs> Actually, I, I've... I never intended to finish the US versus American stuff um, where I did. It's not finished business as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a real rich area for conversation between us Brits and uh, our friends in the States. Uh, and if you've not seen my videos on US versus American stuff, uh, it's certainly not picking a fight. It's certainly not saying anybody else is wrong. It's just fun to compare the different language that we share um, and the way we uh, term parts of the vehicle to the way we term tools, etc. It's just fascinating to look at why they're different. Um, it, it's quite interesting that a lot of the stuff that Americans would call parts of their car and tools of their car I just like comedy gold if you're a Brit. They're just phrased such that they're funny. Um, and yet an awful lot of the way that Americans phrase their tools and parts of the car are such straightforward logic, which I think is very indicative of the language. You know, it's literally say what it is. Um, but we should adopt them. But I do enjoy the entomology of words, the history of words, where they come from, the sources, etc. Not because I speak the Queen's perfect English, just because I spend a lot of time uh, crafting text um, to, if you like, influence people as part of my other career. Um, so I, I do enjoy looking into why words are what they are. Rocker panels still is one that sticks in my mind as I've heard all the all the discussion. I've seen all the, the versions of why do Americans call a sill? It's a sill because it goes under the doors. Um, why is it called a rocker panel? I'm not going to kick it off again here now and explain them, but yeah, look into it, guys. It's really interesting. And uh, what else have we got? Uh, Paul Mizzen again. Yes, John, I'm looking into the XF Sport Brake. I can live vicariously through you. I think 
Arguably, the sport brake is better looking than the saloon. What do the rest of you think? Uh, the saloon is beautiful. I had a, um, two XF saloons. I think they're amongst the best um, high-end saloon cars, sort of five series competitors out there. Um, but there's something about the XF Sport Brake that doesn't shout, oh, you needed the practical one. I think quite a few people bought them because it looked so nice. Um, yeah, so I could take up the argument that this Sport Brake is better looking than the Coupe Saloon. What do we think? What do we think? Uh, Tony Fisher's just popped up on my phone screen saying, I would agree, Sport Brake is better. Don't you hate the predictive text? You actually said that the spork take is better. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Mike Reno, wonderful I can sleep now. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna go back. I'm gonna do some more on the American versus uh, British English. If any of you have got some particular words that fascinate you, confuse you, amuse you, that we use, Americans use, vice versa, yeah ping them to me and I'll add them in. We've uh, we done a brief one on tools, we did a brief one on car, parts of the car. Um, I need to do more, they're very, really, very really interesting. Um, and Jeff, while driving with my kiddo Willow, she sees a new Jag sedan and she's like nine years old and comments, Dad, that does not look like a Jag at all. <laughs> you brought your kid up well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got I've got mixed feelings about the current crop of Jaguars. Um, the XF Saloon current, I think, looks fine. It's a nice looking car. It doesn't stir my soul much. I think it looks quite aggressive, quite Germanic. I think it is exactly what it's intended to be, a, a competitor for the BMWs and Mercedes. Um, but no, it, it just doesn't draw me in a way that quite a few of the um, Jags do, regardless of the era. The, the last one that really drew me hard um, was the, I was going to say current, but it's gone there. The last XJ shape, I think, is a true classic. I think that's beautiful. Um, the... F-Type is good. Um, I admire it immensely. I admire the sound immensely. I've worked on a production line where that's built. So, again, connections. Really like that car. I'm not sure it's beautiful. Um, I think the, the facelift is slightly better than the original. I normally go the other way. I'm, I'm normally quite a purist. I, I like the or designer's original intent. But then we've got all the SUVs. And we've got the F-Pace, we've got the E-Pace, we've got the I-Pace SUV, hard to say. Um, I-Pace is something to admire because it was a first, first all electric Jag. It's one of the best electric vehicles for all round comfort, performance, practicality, all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure it's pretty. The use of black plastic on the doors, low down sills thing, just, uh, it doesn't feel right to me. Um, the interior's okay. The current XF, the interior leaves me completely cold. The XE, you know, I just feel like that grab handle on the side of the um, centre console is there to give it some sort of feature that marks it out. Again, it's very well executed, just doesn't look unique in any way. Yeah, so the last generation kind of lost it, and we're all hoping we're going to see the next generation quite soon, but who can tell? Jaguar is on a mission at the moment, I feel, to reinvent itself and when it emerges from essentially a bit of a sleep, um, I think they're gonna re-emerge in about 18 months time. Um, they need to be dominant in the high-end saloon and sports car sector 
or I feel they will just disappear. Um, I, I think I'll do it, I really do, but it, it's not a given. So it's gonna be very, very interesting. You need to retain unique styling and unique interiors, whatever that is. It doesn't have to be the gentleman's club, which our older cars are, but it has to be different. Okay, um, Jeff Blanchard, F-Type, functionally aggressive. I think mean, that's a really good way of putting it. It is where it is, it's a weapon, and it looks it. I mean, that's where it is. Uh, Tony Fisher, I can't make up my mind between the X100 and X150, love them both. I admire them both. I think X100 is prettier. Um, X150 is the more sensible option given its age, the aluminium architecture, all that sort of stuff. I have a few issues with the headlights, make it look a bit Hyundai. Um, what was the Hyundai Coupe? They look exactly the same as that to me and they're just drawn to them and go, oh. Um, but I love the hatch. I, I call it the hatchback one. Um, the Coupe, I think, is an absolute stunner. The convertible X150, of course, has the solid cover for the folded roof, which you don't get on the X100, which means it's highly desired. But the styling of the convertible, I don't think is quite as successful as the Coupe X150. We're choosing between supermodels. They're all fabulous, all absolutely fabulous. So you can't make a bad decision, but it's a hard decision. Uh, David Ball, hi Paul, I had an F-Pace 3 litre SV6, supercharged, brilliant car, sounds great, but only if you want an SUV. Yeah, it is what it is. It's a, it's a Range Rover, but slightly lower, slightly faster, slightly more road orientated. Mike Reno, I've only ever driven my XK8, so curious about handling. Mine seems to bounce side to side whilst going over the expansion joints or ruts in the road. Seems a bit excessive to me. Is this normal? No. Nope. <laughs> um, X100 should be very, very planted. They are soft. They do move around a little bit, but the handling should be so secure. Um, I would guess, my first instinct is tires, tire pressures and tire condition. I know that when I picked up Purdy, she had some old tires on, and as soon as they were changed, that transformed the car. And the effect of the old tires was it was tram lining, which means follows deviations in the road. In the UK, we have a, hot, um, a crown on the road. So the center of the road is slightly higher than the edges, and that's for drainage. And cars, because of the caster angle on front suspension, will tend to steer towards the high point. And that's good news as well, because it drags you away from pedestrians if you uh, release the wheel. However, it drags you into oncoming traffic. When the tyres become hard, when the tyres collapse a little in the middle so that you're running on sidewalls, uh, my hand gestures really aren't helping, that you get two heavy contact points inside and outside, then it starts to make that very extreme and it doesn't just add a little bit of weight to move you towards the crown. Whenever it touches something in the road, like a cat's eye, a, a, a road defect, expansion joints, it will try and steer towards them. So that would be my first instinct. Uh, after that, dampers and bushes probably, but no, that they should be very, very sure-footed. Should feel like you're not having to put lots of inputs in. And Matt Adams, hi all, another impromptu video. Yes. <laughs> another technical test, but I feel this one's probably gone a little bit better than the last technical test. So I'm possibly heading towards making this a regular thing I will announce it in a standard video, but it's feeling like maybe I should try to do something for 20 minutes, half an hour on a Sunday. Um, would it have a time slot? I don't know. But we'll, we'll 
we'll play with the concept anyway. So, yeah, I think that's probably it for now. Um, I'm going to disappear because I do actually want to get the car up in the air. I do want to take the wheel arch liner out. Let me flip the camera around because I'm going to fall over again. There we go. Uh, get the wheel arch liner out. I haven't decided whether I'm going to remove the washer bottle complete or try and remove the pump. Well, try, you can. Remove the pump in situ. It just depends which one takes my fancy when I'm in there. And then I'll leave the car up in the air on ramps until I'm able to uh, fix the pump or get some new parts. So that's that one. And yeah, I'll do a little bit of preemptive work underneath. But mission one for now is gonna have to be get the uh, debris, let's call it, off my lever. And get ready to do my jobs. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, sorry it was without warning again, but more of a test than it was an actual programme. And uh, I'll hopefully see you all again very soon.